We're booting up Linux Mint 19.3 Cinnamon Edition. This is the beta. It's only been out uh, today, I think it came out. So this is the live session we're booting. We're going to install it when we get up to the desktop. And this is the live desktop of Linux Mint 19.3 Cinnamon. So we'll run through the installer. And I'm going to pretty much take all the defaults as we go through. Uh, this is a virtual machine, so I don't care too much about it. But this is just to have a bit of a look at the system. Defaults again. And again, that's pretty much all the defaults that I use, so we'll let that go. Pick it up at the finish. There's one little mistake there. Featured software. Yes, I don't believe either of those in there. VLC certainly not installed. Uh, Linux Mint need to update their uh, splash screens a bit there. I don't know if GIMP's in there or not, but it's got this new drawing thing as well. Need to uh, do a little bit of updating on some of that. Restart. So the dark theme's continuing with the login screen, so we'll go ahead and do that. All right, everything's loaded up as usual. We've got the welcome screen. The update manager saying there's updates. We'll come back to that in a moment. And there's also this little triangle, which is the system reports, I believe that's called. We'll give a click on that. So it disappears once you click on it, but it should pop up on the screen here in a moment. This is a virtual machine. It's got eight gigabytes of RAM, two CPU cores, and a 30 gig virtual hard drive. I'm not going to install guest editions or any additional uh, drivers for a virtual machine. Uh, so it offers you to do that. Normally you can launch the driver manager from here. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. We'll install language packs, but again, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to set the root password. I'd probably recommend doing this. So we'll launch the terminal. And we're just going to type sudo passwd root. Press enter and put in our own password. And now I'm going to use my same password again and repeat it and done. I normally like to keep away from the terminal. Uh, sometimes you've got to use it. That's one occasion. That's pretty straightforward. You just type what they've written there into the terminal and you're pretty much good to go. Now we can ignore this problem. And I've found, I've done this a couple of times. If you don't ignore the problem and go OK, it's going to keep uh, pestering you. Now this is the other one. I'll just leave it there for the moment. And we'll go back to these first couple. I'm just going to ignore those problems. In the language packs. Okay, and we'll just leave leave that there. Now traditionally what's happened, get rid of the welcome screen, is you start your update manager. You go OK. And naturally there's going to be some updates there, which there is. And this is a change that I've noticed. Is This is pretty typical, to saying do you want to update your local mirrors. There's usually an orange band up the top about time shift as well, and that's why I left this over here. So time shift's not actually in your face so much in this edition as it has been in previous editions. Uh, so if you want to, you can go into the menu. There is their time shift. So I'm going to press ignore this problem just for the moment. We'll close all that down. You can get some other information in there about your system, crash reports, etc. So this is a new 
uh, app or whatever you want to call it that Linux Mint have got in uh, 19.3. So we'll see how that progresses in time. Go and update my mirrors and run the system updates. And then we'll come back when we're finished doing all that. It's going to take the top one there because it's the fastest for my location. Probably one of these two here. Take the top one, apply that, update the cache. If you're doing this for the first time, I'd let it go through those uh, pinging of the servers there, those little dialog boxes. I'd let it finish just to see. And I actually find it helpful to cancel and run it, or you can accept one of them and then run it a second time. Sometimes the servers are asleep when they get pinged or whatever. So sometimes if you do it a second time, you get different results. So we're all done there. We'll finish out of there. We'll install the updates. I'm just gonna say yes to everything pretty much. And I'll let that run. While the update manager is running, we'll just have a quick look through the menu. Most of this will be fairly familiar. This one's new, this celluloid is the default video player. And we'll come back to that later on. And there is also another one called Drawing. I think that replaces GIMP or GIMP. GNote replaces Tomboy Notes. There's the system reports that came up with the little triangle in the right hand corner near the clock and that's probably just about most of it most of the rest of most people will be familiar with have a look here we're all up to date close out of there we'll have a look at some of the settings in here now I'm not a cinnamon user but I do like to have a bit of a look at these things from time to time Have a look at the system info. See so Linux Mint 19.3 Cinnamon. Cinnamon 4.4.2, Linux kernel 5. Uh, There's my processor. You can see it's 6600K with two cores, 8 gigs of RAM, 30 gig hard drive. Apparently, I had a look in here before, is the DPI settings. In, in the display now apparently they used to have their own little uh, icon here but apparently they've been moved into here like so and I'm not going to touch anything there because it caused the screen to behave a bit funny on me so we'll stay out of that uh, probably the most most of the rest of this I think there was can disable the touchpad now for laptops when typing and stuff like that. Uh, the panel can now resize. Uh, here we go, the left zone, so you can change your font, font size and icons and so forth. On the left zone, so I presume that's over here. The center zone and the right zone. So for example, it's currently font size for the right zone is allow the theme so we'll go I checked this out before default must be somewhere around 10 if we go up to 12 you'll see the clock gets a little bit larger like so and if we go down to 6 you'll see the clock gets quite small and as I said I tested that out before I think the defaults around 10 but if we let the theme determine it it'll go back to whatever it was before so that's a nice little option there. Uh, this one I had a little play with before is the window focus mode is click or sloppy. And <laughs> yeah, I know sloppy is a funny expression for it, but um, basically, if you want to activate if you've got another window or we'll just bring up another window 
something else to have here so currently it's active and I can come over here but it's still active over there until I click on this one you can see the cursor has changed on the terminal so if I go to sloppy you sort of just got to hover the mouse over the other window and after a, a brief moment it changes and there's mouse as well so I presume it's just when the mouse hovers, so I think sloppy is just somewhere between clicking and hovering. Uh, I don't know if that's a new new feature or not, but I was just having a look through the settings before and checking a few of them out to see what they do. Pretty much covers us for there. Not going too in depth with everything. We're just going to have a bit of a, a look around to see what what we get. Oh, there's another one in the uh, the file manager here. If we go into the preferences, and most of this will probably be fairly familiar with most people. But the, there's now this one called context menus, so you can use this to set your preferences for a right click. Uh, if we make a new folder in here. And if I right click it, got a list of options there. And obviously not everything's gonna turn up in uh, every menu. It's gonna depend where, where you're applying the menu to or the right clicking context to. Um, so if I right click the desktop, there's the customize option. If I do select that, I dare say that'll be gone and I don't see it there. Not being a regular Cinnamon user, I'm not 100% familiar with everything in the system, so I'm sure most of the stuff that you regular users are used to seeing are probably there with, with some extra enhancements and so forth on this edition. I'm going to have a look at the Matei desktop, and I'll show you a little bit about what I found with the, uh, the video player over there. This is the Matei desktop. As you can see, it looks pretty much the same as the Cinnamon one. The dark theming. And again, with the dark theming on the desktop background, the software update has already been run. And it was the same as Cinnamon. I didn't get the option there with the orange band to, to get time shift kicking off the get go. So, again, it's not. Uh, not pushing us quite so hard to get time shifts going. We want to have a look at um, celluloid. This one also has a G note, I think, in place of Tomboy. And it's got the system report utility, the same as Cinnamon does. And I've already, as you can see, already worked my way through that. And, told it to ignore all the reports and so forth. I'll just open up a little video that I've got here somewhere. So that's what it looks like playing a video and mouse wheel does the volume in about 2% in increments per notch. So I normally get about 5 notches on my uh, VLC on my own system. Uh, double clicking gives you full screen. Double clicking again, the space bar pauses it. Uh, one thing I did notice, it's a lot simpler and probably a lot lighter on resources according to the Linux Mint uh, website on their uh, what's new in Linux Mint 19.3. I did come in here and have a bit of a look through the preferences. Just pause the video if you wanna read them a bit closer there. Uh, but there is also, if we go to keyboard shortcuts, now there's three panels here that doesn't appear to be configurable. 
uh, you can search, but that's probably about all you can do there. I thought you could click on these or whatever, but I think they're fixed. And there's two, there's three panels there. The only thing I would say is that, uh, for example, volume up and down, I think volume up is the zero on your keyboard, like so, and volume down is the number nine. Does that work? Yep, that works on both my numpad and the main keypad. Uh, however, button one, for example, starts. So I could just see somebody getting into a bit of a tizzy there. They've bumped button one or one of the buttons, and now the contrast has gone too dark or light or something. And button two will take take it back. So it does appear that one goes down, two goes up, and then three is the brightness. So turn the brightness up and then four will be the brightness back down. Um, yeah, just you'd want to be a little bit careful there. You'd press on the buttons and change your settings and not know how the hell you've done it. Uh, but other than that, it looks like it plays videos okay, so I can't really fault it there. In particular, I think if you're on older hardware or less powerful hardware or a laptop, it's got some a lot of features built in there for that with far as power savings and um, CPU cycles, that sort of stuff. You can read all about it on their website. But I'll just have a quick little scroll down through the menu. Most of that looks pretty normal, except as I say, the drawing and celluloid and G note. Um, other than that, most of it's pretty, oh, and the uh, system reports. Other than that, that doesn't look too different than my uh, my system. I think I could get comfortable with it pretty quickly. We'll go and have a look at XFCE. This is logging into XFCE 19.3. Uh, I have noticed the uh, the triangle and the uh, software update are load extremely fast in uh, XFC they must not have the, the time delay that the others have on them uh, again I'll click on that just to show you there it is showing your system reports uh, so I can ignore the problem ignore that problem ignore that because it's a virtual machine and I'll ignore that as well. So we'll just have a look. This is uh, XFCE, of course. So it's got the, the whisker menu there, whatever it's called. Uh, there's your drawing. There's your celluloid. Your office apps, pretty much what you'd expect to find in a Linux Mint system. And I'm not a XFCE user, so I can't really expand too much on what's there and what's missing and what's new and what's old. So I'll leave that to the XFCE people. And we can see it's using about 460 megabytes of memory. And the CPUs aren't doing too much. On the Matei and uh, Cinnamon systems that was using, I think my Matei was a little under 700 megabytes. And I actually can't remember what Cinnamon was, but it'd be about the same as Matei. So yeah, the XFCE is a little bit lighter on the, the hardware there. So it's not a full review, I'm just having a bit of a, a look at these systems myself and uh, thought I'd share it.